I just want to say this is the only Evo I'm excited about because this thing has been sitting in a heap for <laughs> the entire time that I've known Ron. Oh. Oh. Yeah, look, listen, oh, oh, listen. Shit, tranny delete? Yeah, Bro, that's the hot thing right now. You got an old car with sealed beams, whether they're seven inch, like this, or this, or this. Or maybe you got a couple of these bad boys. Or maybe you just have one. Either way, this four by six sealed beam rectangle, still pretty crappy lighting. Our friends at Morimoto have worked with Holly to come up with this, the Retro Bright. A retro looking light with modern tech. They're twice the light output of halogens, low draw, extended life, but they're also compliant, no glare beam pattern. Check the description below for all the sizes, more details, and where you can get them. All right, welcome back. Another episode of Garage Gar no, I can't even do it. Garage Garage, Jim Connor special. And today, you're introducing the car that has been a Jim Connor car for the longest amount of time Ron's Evo. Back here for a little bit, just for a Yo, little where bit. Where has this been? This hasn't been here for like three years. Man, yeah, has I'm this not... ever been in this building? Oh, I don't think this car's been in this building. I think it has because for a while, wasn't it back in that? Was it the other it Evo? For, oh, for it was a little for a bit. Little bit. For a little Didn't bit. you have two Evos here at one point? Not here, not here. The two uh, Evos were 621 days. I just want to say this is the only Evo I'm excited about because this it does, thing does it have an been, LS? That doesn't matter. <laughs> This thing has been sitting in a heap for the entire time that I've known Ron, because apparently there used to be this place that was over by my old house and by Ron's old house. It was a, a super sketchy intersection where this thing uh, met its demise. Oh, this is when you guys lived in Utah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and now the city finally put a stoplight into that section because enough people totaled their cars, myself included. When I met Ron, and the reason he's named Ron Car is because you had a Subaru. I had a Subaru. You were a Subaru boy. <laughs> Listen, I've been a rally boy since day one, and the Subaru was my dream, that was affordable. I really, 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 really wanted an Evo. Went to the dealer, test drove it, everything. Couldn't afford it at the time. I could afford a WRX. So I got that, raced that, did a bunch of stuff with it for years and years and years, blew up a motor. <laughs> only one, only one. I'm not trying hard enough. <laughs> and then I sold it because I saw this car on eBay. Now, this car belonged to my friend Char, who had to move out of country. Yeah. By the way, nothing is more suspicious than quickly dismissing had to move out of country. That's usually Zach's kind of clientele and friends. Yeah, yeah listen. But also the best kind of people that buy cars and stuff. Here's your quick tip. Listen, Char is good people. I didn't ask him questions. I just saw this car on eBay. I recognized the username. I just said I want to get it to the family. 2013, I got this. Evo 9 RS 2006. By the way, explain, wait, wait. I'm getting too excited. Deep breath. Explain to people what an RS is. So, so the RS Rally Sport came from Mitsubishi as the car of like, hey, this is what we're gonna give to rally teams. In Japan, it came on steelies. It had no power windows. It had no radiator, no AC, no anything. A lighter roof. Did you sell your Evo yet? Panels. Of course you did. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Keep so the RS had all the lightweight stuff, a better diff package, and none of the other frills. In Ron was really mad that I got an MR the more premium edition. No, and he's not. It was just getting in the way of our friendship, so I had to sell it. <laughs> Question for you, is the RS more expensive or less expensive than the MR? Like, Brand new, it was less. But yeah. now, less options, more expensive in today's world. Because it was really tip, tip to Mitsubishi, do what Porsche does. Remove parts and charge more. Right. That's Genius. Mitsubishi <laughs> headquarters looks like a Sears. Yeah. There's just no one there. That's the kind of car brand I'm attracted to. Lancia makes one car today. Also have one of those. Single car makes. I don't know That's what your it thing. Is. I'm a OEM murderer. So anyway, this is one of 358 in the US. 
it got wrecked. Big front end collision. So then I brought it to our friends at Horns. They put a brand new chassis leg in the front, brand new subframe, all kind of realigned and everything. And it's sad. Did you tell the people that you owned another RS at the same time? I missed and you it. You had a really stupid fact about it. <laughs> at one point, I owned 1% of America's Evo 9 RSs. Because right. I had to. 1%er. What the I said, I got to bring this thing back. You know what? Because it's got all this new shit on it. I don't, it's not precious anymore. I might as well go balls to the wall and make a Gymkhana car. If you go back to the first episode I did on this car like 70 years ago, I said it's gonna be a Gymkhana car. The plans for this thing are roughly 500 horsepower because with the Gymkhana grid stuff I plan to do with this thing, I want a lot of power band. Without knowing when grid was coming back. And Ron was cool before all of us were cool. Say one more hipster thing. Ron put a wing on a Evo that came wingless. In 06 was sacrilege. <laughs> the RS trunk lid was like, it was unobtainium because everyone wanted it. And Ron Wait, was like, you, I want a wing on you it. You didn't even put a different trunk lid. You drilled your stock trunk lid? Yes. Damn. Savage. At the time, when I bought this, 50,000 mile Evo RS, 15 grand. I What's that on Bring a Trailer right now? Uh, 15,000 mile? 50. 50,000 mile RS would sell for like 40. These cars are really rare. They were really yeah. cheap for a point in time. Every knucklehead kid destroyed it turning it into a race car, or totaled it. So they're hard to find now. I like, also are... drove it through snow, I ice raced it, so the entire bottom was all rust. I took every knuckle, every bolt, subframe, arm, everything, sandblasted it, steel it, everything, restoring it back. Cause it was, it was rough. It's also for people who don't know, probably one of the greatest stock driving cars of all time. I meant for the price. Like obviously a GT3 RS, a fantastic car, the Evo, but for the price. The Evo, granted, not on the same spectrum. The steering feel is probably oh. just as good. Is one of the best steering feels it's, ever. It's crazy. For driving, it's, it's for, for K-turns, impossible. It's also yeah. borderline miserable for just driving on the street because yes. it's so twitchy and so precise. But, but like, it's what makes it great. Yeah, yeah. it's phenomenal. Yeah. Can, do we want to get into the car? Yeah, I've never yeah, yeah, seen yeah. Let's, it. Let's walk, walk us through this. So in the background, while HPG Yo, just has pop, been down. Just pop the hood. Just pop the hood. What's... I've, been, I've been doing some stuff. I've been doing some stuff. So I've been working with Ronnie at the Speed Lab. Going to a place called the Speed Lab. Speed Lab. The laboratory of That's speed. the kind of stuff Ronnie Oh yeah, well, look, there's a couple of those Wait. on the street um, outside the shop. Hey, was that? Yeah, look, listen. Oh, oh, listen. shit, Tranny Delete? Yeah, Bro, that's I heard that's the hot thing that's right now. Sick. Yeah, yeah. Get it, okay? This is a rose. You're roasting me. So what's uh, up with this motor? So the motor, it is the original motor, just as far as the block goes. Everything else has kind of been redone, reworked. All about power band. So it's a 2.2 liter. It's got a Cowley's crank. It's got CP Carrillo rods, custom pistons, full GSC top end. So uh, GSC S2 cams, what is Beehive it? Springs. What is GSC? Uh, GSC is a, just it's a, a brand. Company. Okay. It's a brand. Sorry. They, they I'm, gonna, make... I'm gonna ask stupid questions because I know nothing. No, it's all good. No. We're used to it. You said it has a stock block. So I, can I backtrack here? How much power can a stock block handle? The iron block on these can take a lot, like a thousand pretty easily. Then you want to start getting into concrete filling, anything above a thousand. Like, con oh, like, like the water jacket? Like drag racing spec. Yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah. you're basically making the drag a solid deck do. with using concrete. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. When Do he you... says stock block, physical block. Yeah. It's yes. got all the rotating assembly built. No, yeah. I, I know that. Uh, so do you have to run like a, like a stud girdle or anything like in the bottom? Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, as far as build goes, I mean, I, I told Ronnie, I was like, let's build something that's capable of 900 and run it at 650. Cause in grid, you don't need all that. Actually, it kind of hurts you having like crazy amounts of top end power. I want to take that power band and put it this way. So this makes Cut to Ken Block X Games talking about the reason he lost is because he couldn't dial out the power and he had too much power and yeah. he was getting too much wheel spin. What was the toughest thing out here of this course? Uh, I've just, I've got too much horsepower, believe it or not, and I, I can't get the wheel speed to slow down to get grips. Tanner had figured out how to get like really low, I'm talking like 2,500 RPM boost and being able to spin tires. So I went with the full race, uh, full race manifold, twin gate, and that goes into a twin scroll Garrett G30 900 turbo. So it'll be twin scroll, I'll have some nitrous fill, and eventually we'll go with some rally style LS too. So the trans that's broken, explain to us what will be in here. The trans that's going in is gonna be uh, X shift five speed sequential. Went with the five speed because you could get wider gears in the same casing, so it can hold more torque, more clutch kicks, you know, dumb things like that that you gotta do in grid. 
Um, then it's just the Skunk 2 intake manifold. Really stoked on that full radium uh, fuel system. They make a really, really sick kit for this car. Plug and play. ETS, big old intercooler up front. CSF radiator from an Evo 6, so I can run this placement on the turbo and the single fan. What makes, what's the Evo 6 one? Why is that just different? a different shape? So you yeah. can, uh, it's, it's thinner, I believe, and you can run the turbo here. Cause there's the, the, the big, the big thing on the eights and nines, the upper radiator hose is in the center. So it comes out and runs really close to your manifold, which um, is really stupid. So the six and seven ones put it here. So it's nice and off to the side and away from all the heat. Yeah. So as far as ECU goes, I'm running full Haltech elite setup. You can actually see it plumbed in here. Uh, Elite 2500 kind of lets me run all the things I need to run with all the inputs. Uh, that's what we're starting with. We might have to move to a Nexus when we start going with the ALS stuff and all that, but I just want to get it running. I want to get the car chassis dialed, everything dialed, and then we could start stepping up other stuff. Because for me, priority is getting this thing running and testing. That's the key. And then we could get fancier and crazier shit later. All right, so let's wrap it out. Just in the back, nothing too crazy, but I did relocate the battery into the back, and I gravity with a little melee mount right here. Oh, all those melees are nice. They yeah, are. I they, so too. I like them so much. Is man. that actually attached right now? Can I see some? Yeah. Like, how much does this one weigh? Because the, yo, it's yo. stupid light. <laughs> I'll show them. And well, we 970 that. cranking amps. This is like, I have the same basic essential battery in my K5, it's just bigger just to fill space. It looks like a, like a stash can right. that's supposed to be on your like, you like hide your weed in it yeah, when you're a kid. You have no idea. Oh. You, you know what's funny? The weight of that zero gauge going from there to here oh. probably oh. weighs more than the battery. 100% yeah. weighs more than the battery. This is also, also sick place Sick. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Yo, what are those called? Your antenna. What are those called, Volkswagen boy? Antennas? No, FUBA? Oh my god. Did you remember wow, that? I haven't heard that Fuba. in forever. What does that stand for? I think it's the never. brand that makes it. No, that looks like what my Las Vegas girlfriend beats me with. Sorry, TMI. By the way, since these are so light, you know what a really good place for them is? Right in the center console or behind the seat. Mm. Because then you can reach back and push the restart button while you're in the car. I don't, I don't anticipate, I don't anticipate needing that, but I, I have a lot. <laughs> yeah. We know. All right, what else you got in this thing? Suspension? The red, yeah, suspension-wise, it's on Olin's that I got off of just the Evo forum, but hey, Olin's are Olin's, they're good. Vorschlag camber plates up front. That's the same setup I ran on the old Evo. Took it off before I sold it, put it on OEMs. So what's, what are we doing today? The body panels are on. I got a lot of carbon bits. I actually have carbon doors too. Uh, we put them on for mock-up, but a lot of this stuff needs to get painted. I'm gonna keep it white so I can put a livery on it later, keep it streetcar looking in the meantime. So I gotta take off the hood, the fender, the front bumper, the skirts. I got a JDM rear bumper because it's an absolute must. First thing you gotta do on these when you get them. And then I'll send all that off to paint and we can get it back on. Other than that, just some mock-up. I got seats, I got a steering wheel, just some little things while I'm waiting for the you changing out the airbag wheel? Yeah. The proper wheel? Yeah. No cage? That should be super easy. I think so. Yeah. And why no cage? Because in Gymkhana Grid, you don't need a cage. Because it's, it's not, solo it's not racing, door -door. it's not door-to-door -door, like drifting that goes tandem. You don't actually have to run a cage. I mean, let's be real, roll cages look cool, so. They whatever. do, they do. And I will, I will go with the cage, just later. <laughs> My first time opening these up. What? Yo! Ooh. Look at that. Ooh. Dude. That's a friggin' door. Look how light that is. Dude, that's nuts. Can you wear it on your neck? That's good. I'm a door boy, so I'm gonna keep these in here. And the rest of them look uh, just like that. Carbon door. All right, Gary and I are on the rear bumper removal process. It's a good job because we don't have to put it back on. Gary thinks he could just rip it right off. I probably could, but I don't. This is a JDM rear bumper, and if no, I no, this is an NA rear bumper. These are garbage. Oh, right. actually, yeah. Should we? Oh, yeah. yeah. Just should rip it off. So, <laughs> is that what was sitting in front of my car this whole time? Yes. Honestly, when you buy an Evo in America, this is really the first mod you should do before you do anything else. You want to get the JDM bumper. So if you take a look at where Vin's at, the USDM bumper sticks out 
a lot. The USDM bumper is very Lancer. Yeah. This is Evo. It's so Lancer with the exhaust opening. It's got a built-in diffuser to diffuse air and let people know it's not just a Lancer. It's a diffuser. It's got no side markers. But look at how much it sticks out here, right? You know, like a little bit. Look at this shelf. Look at this Continental shelf. Get the side view. Get the side view going. That is unnecessary. Running an impact to take like a 10 mil off. Is that inside? That's a little too long. I need a shorter one. Did you mix and submit with that? First of all, you are not taking off 10 mils or applying 10 mils correctly unless you have 2,800 foot pounds of torque. Uh, you know, like, I think my story of working on cars is that I will struggle with something so I don't have to do an extra step. Like, I don't want to take this wheel off to take this one bolt off. I would rather just struggle. Oh, that's the, let's get it. Now, when you put a JDM rear bumper on the car, you get to do some lightweight mods, which is throw your bumper rebar in the trash and not put one back on. Well, no, actually, you see what Ron got? Ron got a bash bar for the back. What? Bring that bad boy up. That ain't the right, the right size, boss. I like the way you clean the shaft off when it comes out, too. Shit, you're used to buying JDM import. Nah, cars. my shit ain't my shit ain't from Utah. It's from Japan. But <laughs> shit. Yeah. But you definitely need to build you definitely need to modify the racks. I'm gonna have to modify the actual racks. Yeah. But I mean for now, to get the car going, I actually don't mind sitting a little higher so I could see over the nose. Yeah. And then You got enough, you have enough room for a helmet. Yeah. Store, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. All right, so you want me to snug it up where that is right now? Yeah. Yeah, because the wheel come back here a little bit. Yeah. But this is good, because with these seats, I can at least, like, you can still run it. Yeah. I'm just going to watch me struggle with this clip for a bit. It does smell really bad, doesn't it? It's definitely a substance banned in the state of California. All right, so this is with the Works Bell Hub Boss as it comes. I think I want it closer to me because I got, I got the problem of having long legs and a short torso. So I got to be a little further back, which leg wise, I think the knee position is really good. I'm actually quite happy with that. But usually, the way I size up my cars is I'll put my hand straight out ahead and usually I want the wheel to hit the, uh, my wrist so I can, you know, get my wrist over. So if I'm strapped in, currently it's like in front of my palm. So I need, I need a little bit of spacer in there, which I have one. I gotta go pilfer it from another car of mine, but we can make that work. So I'll just grab a spacer, but other than that, we got our airbag delete, that resistor is in here. Put some electrical tape on that. Uh, this is cinched down on the chamfer. Got my horn button here. So yeah, just a spacer away from making this work.
Yo. Hey. Look at this complicated ass. I know, oh. isn't that crazy? Even the, the stock steering wheel, it's kind of wild. There's a, there's just one eight mil Allen bolt coming through here that you undo and it slides right out. Are you just justifying this overcomplicated hub? This is how it works. This is how it works. You gonna, you gonna show what I'm pilfering it from? So unfortunately at some point, uh, late last year, you boy got a little spicy. I got a tune, I got a, I got a chip, an ECU tune for this here Lancia Delta Integrale. And it felt great, oh, it felt so good. It was nice and fast, super responsive, phenomenal. I lasted about a day uh, and then the engine went kaboom. So this thing needs a new motor, uh, Evo needs a new trans, a rally car needs a new motor, RX-7 needs a clutch. Just comment below if you think I should just quit. I think I should just stop, I'm just gonna quit. But anyway, in the meantime, I got that OMP spacer right there in between. So because I'm not driving this car right now, I'm just gonna take that out of this car, put it in the Evo, order another one. Eventually when this car's back on the road, it'll get another one. Yep. Right. Let's go see if that spacing works. Spacer. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I like that. All right, so to get this thing running, I'm in parts purgatory. I'm waiting on the transmission, which is a couple parts that have to make it from the Czech Republic. Uh, that's just to get the thing on the dyno and actually putting down a number. But in between then, I got a lot more stuff to do. I got to paint all these panels. I got to sort the interior, get it cleaned up. There's a bunch of shit I got to do. But anyway, I'm going to do all that in between while I wait for the parts and hopefully hit the dyno sometime in the next couple weeks. So until then, I'll see you guys later. Maybe we'll go to one of these two jabrons. Because we got a ton of parts to put on and a ton of modifications to make. Trying to go noodling? I'll go noodle with you. Next up, I gotta put this hood on. I think it's gonna hit the throttle body. Maybe then take manifold. Put the hood on! Put your hood on! 